Well, we're ready to start gluing up now, and as you know, gluing up can be a bit of a stressful time. It'll probably be made even more stressful by the fact I'm going to try and film it at the same time. So you might have to uh, allow for a little bit of uh, erratic uh, film techniques <laughs> going on now. Uh, but hopefully it will give you a gist of what I'm doing when I'm gluing up the cabinet. <coughs> so I've finished all my biscuiting. Uh, I'll put some biscuits down and where the shelf comes in there as well. And also a couple on the inside side here where the uprights come. Uh, I've done a dry clamp and checked everything. Um, <coughs> I've also put some clearance holes in for the screws to hold the uh, um, panels together while the glue's setting. <coughs> Saves them to use clamps. And I'm part of the way through gluing up at the moment actually. So I'm using this uh, glue dispenser to put uh, glue into the biscuit holes. And I'm only using glue in the biscuits holes. It's not much point in putting it on the edge surfaces. It just doesn't serve that purpose. And it's just messy here. Really. Handy little dispenser this. You can get them from a famous um, tool supplier based in Axminster in Devon. Oh, I should be able to get screws on all these outer uh, base edges, but I'm going to um, have to do a little bit of checking with square and everything before I do the screws for the side. So, do some pilot holes. turn it around was to sort of check that this is all meeting up nicely here so I've put a couple of clamps in prior to actually um, screwing up this panel up the side. I'll just cut the pilot hole. just get this cross piece on. And if you remember I left that uh, screw out so in order that I can actually push out um, push out that end side. Not allow me to spring that in. Make sure this is all nice and level along the top here because we're sitting the, um, the table down into the router table down onto it. Okay, <clears throat> once we've done the final assembly, uh, it's all over about the shouting really. 
Uh, I wanted to show you just one or two of the additions that happened after that. Um, so if we open the lid, I've hinged the lid on with a couple of uh, four inch uh, butt hinges. Um, <coughs> and I've fitted this hatch at the front here. I don't know if you can see, there's a couple of rare earth magnets there and there's similarly there's rare earth magnets here. So I can just drop it on and it fits like that. <coughs> Also, I don't know whether you can see, but there is a slight uh, gap at the top there. When I originally fitted this, I had it completely sealed, and I was looking to get a, a proper vacuum box, a proper vacuum in there. Um, but I was finding that the motor was overheating slightly, the, uh, the router motor. Um, so what I've done is I've taken that cut out there, so that means we've got a flow of air running through to the uh, extraction at the back. <coughs> I think it's also improved the... Um, uh, extraction of it as well because you can see there's not a lot of uh, shavings left in there and I've been using this quite heavily recently. Um, <coughs> so calling it a vacuum box was a bit of a misnomer really. <coughs> as I say we've got the NVR switch here um, which uh, it's got a socket at the back um, to plug into. Now, I don't really want to go into the electrics on that because uh, I'm not an experienced ele electrician. Um, I've just sort of followed my nose really <laughs> a bit on that. Uh, so if you're not familiar with electrics, then you need to get a proper electrician to deal with that. Uh, if we just take the hatch off again, and we'll zoom in a little bit, and you can see what I'm talking about, this uh, little car jack which I've fitted in down there. Right, so I've got in a bit closer, um, and you can see the, the scissor jack which I've fitted in there. So it's just basically screwed to that uh, bottom there. And I've turned up, a, well I haven't actually turned it, I've, I've used the same um, um, router trammel on my router to create this little uh, round disc here with a, put a little handle on it. I just epoxied it onto the end of the router there where the big handle usually goes. And it does provide quite an efficient lift. In some ways possibly not quite as sensitive as I'd like but it, it's, it's okay. So I don't know if you'll be able to see once I've dropped the router down. No, it's a bit too dark in there, isn't it? But you can see if I start turning that, it does lift the router very nicely. Um, one thing I have also fitted, I'm going to have to zoom out a bit for you to see. You these little hold downs here, because I was aware that we could have a problem with the jack just pushing the table up and down rather than the router up and down. So what I've done is I've, I've put these here just to lock the table down so that uh, the jack can work more efficiently. <clears throat> That's it really. Um, I'm quite pleased with the way this uh, is performing. The, the router lift and the uh, extraction system uh, seems to be very efficient. Um, I hope that if you sort of follow what I've been doing here that you'll not only turn out with a very good cabinet but you'll also have picked up a few uh, cabinet making tips. Anyway, good luck with it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>